What's up guys, GT here. In this video, we'll be checking out two pedals from Sonic Kick, the Black Hammer and the Sonic IR. Now, obvious disclaimer, this video is in no way a paid promotion and Sonic Cake have been kind enough to send me these pedals for a review on the channel and have also allowed me the freedom to choose the content for this video, which is awesome. Now, before we get into hearing some tones, I want to talk about certain other key aspects which are important for every product success. Firstly, the packaging of both the products is quite nicely done, minimal and compact as the products themselves. The products are delivered in almost all cardboard packaging, which is obviously great for the environment and for our planet's future as well, right? So extra points in my book to Sonic Cake for that. The build quality is quite good and the pedals have a fairly heavy feeling to them since they are encased in metal enclosing. All puns intended. <laughs> The Black Hammer pedal is Sonic Cake's one-stop solution to a multi-effects guitar pedal for anything metal and high gain. And plus it's compact and it can literally fit in your guitar case for you to carry anywhere in the world. However, the only thing missing is that unlike the other pedal bar rock stage from Sonic Cake, the Black Hammer does not come equipped with its inbuilt IR. But that's where the Sonic IR comes to the rescue, but more on that a little later. The Black Hammer pedal has good quality foot switches and are fairly tactile to use in the few weeks that I've been using them. Although the product is compact, there is fair amount of separation between the switches, preventing you from stepping on to two of them at the same time, right? Now, I do feel that red text over black background is not such a great choice as visibility is certainly impacted in lower lighting. Which is probably what it's like, uh, if I remember correctly, in most of the gigs that I at least played in. Similarly, the light behind the individual knobs is definitely a great idea, but it does make it difficult to see what values are dialed in for the different controls. One other minor thing though, there is no way to tell if the pedal is really on until you press one of the foot switches to enable at least one effect. A small power LED may be a good idea to resolve this issue as well. The knobs seem fairly smooth and precise and it's easy to turn them for a small amount for that precise tone tweaking if you want to. They are obviously quite small which is an acceptable trade-off considering the small form factor that this pedal offers at this price point. Coming to the Sonic IR, the Sonic IR is a nifty little IR loading tool which allows you to load up to 11 guitar, bass and IRs to stimulate any possible cabinet that you might need for your tonal capabilities. It comes packaged in a small box and it includes a USB-C cable for transferring any custom IRs from your computer and it does not come with a power adapter however. Surprisingly, it also has an XLR balanced output for plugging into a mixer or an audio interface system which is quite good for such a small pedal. On top you have the volume control and a fairly big knob to switch between the 11 IRs. Again, I could not really tell if the pedal was switched on or not after plugging in the power so a visual indication would definitely help a lot over here. Also, it's hard to remember which number corresponds to which IR and some sort of display would have been really nice. But given the form factor and the affordability, I think it's a fair trade-off. And eventually, you would rather incline towards the tone which really sound good to you, right? And the names won't really matter. Now, as far as the custom IRs are concerned, you do need a software to convert your IRs, which is provided by Sonic Cake, but I haven't really ventured down that route yet. Maybe it's an idea for a future video. All right, let's plug it all in and let's jump into some tones now. All right, let's jump into some tones, right? Before we do that, I have to explain my signal chain to you. I am playing my Ernie Ball Music Man JP15, my trusty guitar. Uh, you've seen me use this countless number of times on the channel. I am going from there directly into the Black Hammer, which is powered by its known 9 volt adapter. And from there, I'm going out into the Sonic IR, which is also powered by its own 9 volt adapter. And from there, I'm going out into the Moto M4 sound card that I have, or audio interface as you like to call it. From there, I'm going directly into my DAW, which is Cubase 10.5. All the sounds you're gonna be hearing is directly coming from this signal chain. There is no post-processing that has been done at, at all at any of the sounds that you're hearing. So, uh, right now I've got everything switched off on the Sonic Cake Black Hammer and I believe the Sonic IR is on cab number 7. As I said, it has 11 cab choices to choose from. 
the volume somewhere at noon so pretty much what you're hearing is a di signal of the guitar but not exactly di because it's going through a cab so let's hear how it is sounding at the moment so i'm playing on my neck pickup and volumes on full and tones on full as well so That sounds quite sweet in itself. Uh, let's check out some of the IRs from the Sonic IR. So I'm gonna switch over to IR number one. I believe this is gonna be a Champion 1x8 or a Fender Champ 1x8 cabinet. So this is how it sounds. A little boomy. And that's something that I also feel that should be added in the Sonic IR is probably uh, controls for something like a low cut and a high cut because coming from the XFX world those two knobs make a huge difference uh, in your tone as well so something like that would also really benefit the Sonic IR in terms of giving that capability to the user to have a different low cut cut out some of the top end or cut out some of the low end as well shifting to IR number two this is a Vox AC 32 by 12 cabinet That sounds sweet enough. Uh, let's jump uh, next one. This is a Marshall 25502 by 2x12 cabinet number 4. I like that one. That sounds sweet. Next one. This is a orange 4x12 cabinet. Too much space in there for my taste let's move on to the next one next one's a pv6505 4 by 12 cabinet all right let's move forward Cabinet number nine is going to be a Mesa Boogie Rectifier 4x12 cabinet, one of my favorites. Let's hear how this sounds. That sounds really cool. The next two are pretty much base cabinets, so I'm gonna skip those for now. Now let's jump, let's stay on number nine, which is a Mesa Boogie Rectifier for Battle Cabinet. Let's add in some effects and see how it sounds from the Sonic Cake uh, Black Hammer. So I'm gonna add in the chorus first. So let's switch that on. And you can see that it turns on blue and probably as you're seeing from the overhead view that some of the indicators might not be very clearly visible as I called out earlier. And that's something that I really like them to see how, how they can fix it because in low lighting situations, uh, it's good that it lights up to tell you that it's on, but the 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 values that I've dialed in becomes kind of unclear once the lights are on. Uh, so uh, I believe the first control is going to be the volume, I believe, and the second one is going to be the depth, and the third one is, I believe, the rate. So. Let's keep the volume at noon at the moment. Uh, the depth, I've pretty much kept it around one o'clock, I believe, and the rate is almost zero the way I like it. a bit enough uh, bass in there let's increase the mix a little bit more and uh, increase the rate also as well let's hear how that is sounding a little bit more rate and more mix Now 
that's sounding really cool. So uh, I think I believe I pushed the rate quite high up. So let's hear if it's even higher up. Let's see how that sounds. Let's increase the depth also this time a little bit more. And let's hear how that sounds. That sounds kind of wacky and all out of control because that's obvious, right? Because I pushed the rate so high up and I pushed the depth also so high up. So mix, let's bring it down a little bit. I think I like it around here. That sounds really cool. Let's switch off the chorus. Let's add in some delay. Now this is more of a digital delay in my opinion. So this is how it sounds. So you can go up to 500 milliseconds from what I read. So let's try some a uh, little higher delay time over there. Let's try a little lower mix. Let's see how that sounds. Alright, that sounds really sweet, right? So let's add in some chorus along with the delay and see how that sounds. So it's enough of the delay and enough of the chorus and enough of the clean tone. Let's jump into some high gain tones. So I'll try and dial in a crunch sort of a tone and then we'll obviously look at some sort of metal tones as well so let's switch on the high gain control uh first one i believe is a noise reduction second one is the level you have the bass the mids the treble and the gain as well so everything i think the bass mids and uh, the tone stack is at uh, noon at the moment and noise reduction i've got it around uh 9 30 10 around 10 o'clock and the volume is 100% which is uh, max out. So let's hear how this is sounding at the moment. I'll switch on to my uh, bridge pickup. And let's, let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> first thought it's quite boomy and I found this uh, a particular thing happening with this pedal is that I think the bass and the mids are quite sensitive so if you have anything above like you know even one or two I think it adds in a lot of bass in there and becomes boomy quite quickly and that's okay right because for the price that you're getting for this pedal I think it allows you a lot of diversity in the tone as well if you want sort of a heavy sort of mid based or a you know bass based tone you can definitely achieve that using this so what i like to do is bring down the bass quite a lot i think anywhere between one and two is going to be nice uh, anything above that it's going to sound a little boomy uh, that's one thing i particularly found about this pedal uh, mids also i'm going to bring it down my guitar is more mid bass but i'll make you hear of more samples as well uh, with higher mids Treble I like to push up quite a lot because it gives us that top end that we want. Noise reduction is fine, volume is fine. Let's add in a bit of gain and let's hear how this sounds now. <laughs> That sounds sweet, let's try some different IR, maybe shift to IR number uh, six, I believe. Sorry, that's IR number seven, I believe.
That sounds sweet in itself. Let's add in a little bit of mid as I promised. Let's make it a little bit more mid bass. All right, that sounds sweet. Let's add in some more gain. Is it metal enough yet? Let's try some different IRs. Let's jump to six, five, four. Let's see how four numbers. <laughs> Add in some more gain because we love gain. Let's add in some more noise reduction, maybe. And let's reduce the mids a little bit as well. Is that the mids? <laughs> yep, that's the mids. Let's bring it down. Is it sounding metal enough? I think I pushed the noise reduction too much. Let's bring it down a little bit. Maybe change the IR. That's sounding really cool. Um, should we add in some chorus and see how it sounds? Let's bring the mix down a little bit and bring the rate down a bit as well. <laughs> Bring the mix down quite a lot, I think. Is it sounding metal enough? Let's switch off the chorus and let's play something else. Let's add in the boost control now, which is supposed to give us an extra push. So let's keep it at zero and then we'll increase it slightly. Let's see how it sounds. That's sounding sweet. Let's add in some more treble, I feel. That's sounding really cool. Different IR, maybe let's shift to the Mesa Boogie IR and see how it sounds. Number 9 I believe. 
Little too much bass, let's cut down the bass even zero and mid to even zero. That's sounding nice, right? So what about some lead tones now? Let's add in some boost, more boost, and see how that is sounding with some delay as well, perhaps. Let's put on the delay and let's add in a little bit of mids to have that sort of a thick, juicy, sweet lead tone. Bring back the feedback a little bit. I think there's too much feedback happening and let's bring down the mix as well. Let's see some other IR. I think IR number four sounds really cool as well. That's sounding nice. Let's try some other IRs, maybe even go down to one or two. Alright, moment of truth, let's see what maximum gain we can get out of this. Boost all the way up, gain all the way up. Max gain, let's see how that sounds in terms of sustain. So what do you guys think about the tones? Please comment your thoughts below. And before you go, please do give this video a like and please do subscribe if you want to hear more guitar tones. You can check out a lot of other tone related videos on the channel. And as always, until I see you guys in the next video, please stay safe guys and keep rocking. Cheers, bye-bye.